It's been some time since I last spoke about Amazon pay-per-click advertising, better known as Amazon PPC. This is a platform that Amazon provides their professional seller plan account types, the ability to sponsor and to market their products using Amazon's platform. So today I wanna to share with you definitely my most efficient and my most effective advertising strategy that I use for all of my products from start to the very, very end. So today let's get into it. We are going to be using this test product here. If you've been on the channel for some time, for years now, you're well aware of this test product. Now this product is currently unavailable because I do not have any stock at Amazon since it's just a test product. Uh, but for this scenario, let's just pretend that the sales price is $7.99. We'll come back to that when we uh, go over our advertising budget and see how that all factors into it, as well as being competitive against our competitors. Uh, we'll get into all that. The first thing that I want you to do is to copy your ASIN. If you have the Jungle Scout Chrome extension, you'll see that up at the top of the page here. You can go ahead and just click Copy ASIN and it immediately copies that to your clipboard. If you do not have Jungle Scout, don't worry. You can just scroll down to the very bottom where it says Product Information and then there'll be a row which says ASIN and copy that right there. Okay, great. So at that point, we can go to our Amazon PPC campaign manager. To navigate to this, go to your Seller Central. In the upper left-hand corner, you can click the menu bar, and that'll take you to Advertising, and then to Amazon's uh, campaign manager. You'll be met with this screen here, and this is exactly what we need to be able to create our campaign. So we'll go ahead down below here and click Create Campaign. We'll be met with three different options, Sponsored Products, Sponsored Brands, Sponsored Display. Now, I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you're more than likely a beginner Amazon seller and you do not have a, a product line of multiple brands or just one single brand with multiple products. Uh, so I would recommend continuing with the sponsored products. This is going to display your product at the top of the search results or at the top of an, uh, a competitor ASIN, which we'll begin into more detail here shortly. So click continue and then you'll be met with uh, the settings. So what is our campaign name? Uh, you want to put something in here that is going to identify the product and then also your strategy. That's what I've always done. Using this generic format as such as the date and the time, you know, it's not going to tell you a whole lot about what you're trying to do with that Amazon advertising campaign. So we'll put iPhone 11 cases and then I'll put product targeting because that's going to be the campaign strategy that we're going to get into. Make sure the start date is the date that you want this to actually start and Amazon will start spending your advertising budget. We'll set this as today, we'll have no end date. So you can actually, you know, say you just wanted this to run for two weeks, you can actually put that time frame in here. So if I wanted to go for two weeks, I can put April 19th. So, you know, we'll actually leave that because that makes more sense here. Next is the daily budget. This is a very common question that I receive is, you know, how much should I set for my daily budget? And the honest answer is that it's ultimately up to you. Check how much you have for your overall budget for this product. What are you setting aside for marketing? Uh, that is really what you need to think about here. Now, if you do not have a set budget and you want to just go with what I recommend, I would recommend doing this. You're going to pull up a calculator. So pull that up here. And what I recommend doing is to calculate the total revenue that you expect to generate for the amount of products that you have in your first batch. So for example, for this iPhone 11 case, let's say that we have 200 products that we want to sell. That's how, much, that's how many units that we purchased from our supplier. So we'll put 200 units in here and then we'll multiply that by our sales price. Again, this is just revenue, it's not your profit, it's your, not your net income. So I said before, $7.99 is our sales price. So I'll multiply those together to get about $1,600 is my expected revenue for these 200 units. Now what I recommend doing is to take 10% of your total revenue and allocate that to advertising. So what we'll do is we'll take that number of total revenue and multiply it by 10% and we'll end up getting our total advertising budget. So let's just call this $160. I rounded up 20 cents. And this is the total amount that we want to spend for these 200 units of the iPhone 11 product cases. Now, we wanna take a look at our start and finish date. If you have no end date and you want this to run for months to months, at least pick an end date of when you want this advertising money to run out. For our example here, we have this advertising campaign going for 14 days. So I want to allocate this $160 evenly over those 14 days. So what, what are you gonna do? You divide that by the number of days, 14. And then we're left with $11.43. That is our daily budget. Now I usually round up or I round down depending on the numbers. So let's just round down to $11 for our daily budget. 
Now you do not have to be as mathematical and technical as I usually am for my uh, my business, but I recommend at least putting five dollars to ten dollars when starting out, and then you can set the duration of time. Um, if you only want that to run for a week, a month, uh, two months, you know, whatever it is, that's entirely up to you. All right, and moving down, we have targeting. Do you want to set up an automatic or a manual targeting campaign? Now, I do not recommend setting up an automatic targeting campaign because it's honestly like giving Amazon a free blank check and saying, hey, go find the keywords for me and do all this stuff on my behalf. And I guarantee you that Amazon is just going to spend your money and not really care about your, you know, a metric like your A cost to see how efficiently you're advertising. They just want to spend your money so they can make money. Um, you know, I hope it's not always like that, but that's what I've experienced with my own business. So I'll select manual targeting. That gives us full control on the keywords or the ASINs that we want to target. All right, so scroll down here, campaign bidding strategy. I am fine with the dynamic bids down only. Um, this gives Amazon honestly some leeway on what to set those bids at if they know that you're likely to convert a sale. Now I only want them to go down, so if I set my bid at one dollar per click, you know they may come down to eighty cents if I'm way overspending. So it works in your advantage. I do not want to give Amazon the ability to go up from that one dollars um, if that was the example for the bid. Next, we'll go down to create an ad group. An ad group is just one layer beneath our campaign, so you can have multiple ad groups targeting different tactics and different strategies all within one single campaign. If you're only gonna have one ad group within your one campaign, I would just recommend putting ad group or ad group one, just so you know what it is. Moving down to the product section, this is where we actually select our products by just clicking search or we can enter our ASIN, which we're about to do. Uh, you can actually advertise multiple products within this single ad group. Uh, for this example, we're just going to advertise that one single ASIN, that one single listing, which were the iPhone 11 cases. So type in your, uh, your ASIN right there and click add. And then you should see your product listing on the right hand side here. Just verify that all the information is correct. Remember I said that it is out of stock, but our sales price is $7.99. Um, I'm not gonna actually have this campaign running since it's for test purposes, but just make sure you have stock because if you're advertising a listing that's out of stock, you're just going to waste money and you're not gonna make any sales. All right, and scrolling down to manual targeting, um, if this section's not here, make sure that you go back up to the top and you select manual targeting, not automatic targeting. So my most efficient strategy that I've always implemented um, is the product targeting strategy. Now the reason why I like to do this is because if you have a brand new listing with honestly zero reviews or maybe one or two reviews or even bad reviews, you are really at a disadvantage in the search results and definitely in comparison to your competitors. So my goal with product targeting is to find my competitors that are doing exceptionally well, like this competitor here who has 77,000 um, ratings and they also have over 15,000 monthly sales. Now what if I could actually put my listing on their listing? Here's what I mean by that. So if you scroll down, you'll see this sponsored section, products related to this item. So I could actually use this advertising strategy in this campaign to put my ASIN directly here. So if I have a some type of competitive advantage over this very strong competitor, like a lesser sales price, then I might be able to steal that sale whenever a consumer comes to their page, they scroll down to the other ones here and they see, oh, there's a cheaper one. They click mine and they might make that sale. So that's ultimately the strategy that we're gonna go with here. Um, it's better than doing keywords because if someone just types in iPhone 11 in the search results and you pop up at the top, there's a lesser chance that they're gonna actually select your product and to make that sale when there's a bunch of other sponsored listings as well as other products with very high ratings on that page. So let's go back to the campaign builder and we're going to select product targeting. You'll see this box change from keyword targeting to product targeting, and that's exactly what we want. So scroll down and then select individual products and then click enter list. Now this is gonna ask us the ASINs that we want to put our advertisement on. In other words, who are our top competitors? To find this out, I'd recommend typing in your strongest keywords that relate to your product. For me, it's iPhone 11 um, clear case that clearly describes my product. Now these are all my competitors. So now what I'll do at this point is I love taking the Amazon's choice because that's usually the most popular at that given time. So I'd copy the race in or I'd just bring it up into a new tab and then I'd keep doing the same thing. I'd just keep scrolling down. I'd find a strong competitor like uh, this one with 48,000. Uh, they are they're at 11.99, so I have a competitive advantage over them. Now when I say competitive advantage, what I mean by that is you should be at least 10% below your competitor's price. So for this one, 
it was at 11.99. If you take 10% off of that, which is just basically multiplying it by 90%, uh, you're gonna get $10.79. We'd want our product listing to be at this or less. That gives us more of a competitive advantage. The lower you go, obviously, the less profit you make um, and, and revenue that you make, but more importantly, you're gonna have a better chance of converting that sale in comparison to this competitor. So I'd recommend at least starting out with at least four ASINs of your competitors, if not more, and you can always refine them later on as you monitor your campaign in the metrics. Jumping over to our first competitor, I'll grab their ASIN, paste it in there, and then I'll separate it with a comma. Go to the next one here, copy the ASIN, and separate it with a comma. Once you've added all of your competitor ASINs, select target here, and then again on the right-hand side, you should see those ASINs pop up with the titles. I always just double check, you know, look at the top here, um, the brand names, okay, that matches up, cool Q, O, that matches up, Otterbox, that matches up. So these are the correct ASINs. I did not make a mistake when I was copying and pasting back and forth. Next is our suggested bids. You can go with Amazon's suggested bid. It's what they recommend to give you, you know, a good portion of the bids and to place your advertisement to gain a good amount of impressions. Now, what I recommend doing is to put these bids just slightly above the suggested bid. That way it gives you the advantage over all those other competitors who are also applying the same strategy to these same ASINs. So it's fairly easy. All you have to do is select the bid here and then add about two cents to that to give a, a slight advantage over the suggested bid. Uh, this has worked well in the past for me. And the best thing is, you know, adding two cents, it's not really gonna hurt your profit margin all that much. It's just two cents but it's gonna give you a lot more impressions. So go ahead, do that for all of those, and click Save. All right, and the last section here is our negative product targeting. You do not have to do anything with this section here. What negative product targeting or negative keyword targeting actually is, it will exclude your advertising on those specific ASINs or those specific keywords that you place in here. Now, you should be doing this if you have an automatic campaign or you're targeting keywords that are broad matches or phrase matches because that gives Amazon a lot of freedom to place your advertisement where they see fit as long as it relates to that broad match or that phrase match. Uh, since we're targeting four exact ASINs here, there's no need to put anything in here. And after that, we'll click Launch Campaign. You'll be met with a summary here. Just review everything. You can change all of this information later on. Just check out some of the campaign settings like your schedule, uh, with the end date, the correct year, and also your daily budget. You know, I've made mistakes before where I put in an extra zero, and this was $110, not $11 per day. Those are very costly mistakes if you don't catch them up front. So just give it a double check here. All right, so we'll go to the campaign manager next, and we should see our campaign up and running. Now, it may take some time for this to actually be approved. Um, this actually went immediately to delivering, so that's good news for the status, and then we can see all of our information. Now over time, as this campaign begins to run and we begin to see impressions and clicks and conversions come in, we'll see all that information pop up here. Now here's where I want to get into a little bit more detail on what to do and what metrics to keep a close eye out for because you know, just because you started a campaign, an advertising campaign, it doesn't mean that you are ready to go and this is the most efficient. It requires some time and some work to refine it, to really figure out what are the best ASINs in which I'm able to convert the most amount of sales. So go ahead, click this campaign here that you just created, and then select the ad group and go to targeting. Now what you're seeing here are the product targeting ASINs that we are targeting with our sponsored advertising campaign. We see our suggested bids and what we're bidding at. Now these suggested bids will change over time. So I come in on a daily basis each morning and I adjust my bids to about two cents, maybe a cent more than the suggested bid. This is very dynamic. There are many different competitors that are swaying this bid amount. So make sure you do this on a routine basis. Otherwise, you know, this suggested bid might increase to 30 cents and I'm lower than the suggested bid and I'm not seeing as many impressions. That's why you want to come in here and change that. The last thing that I want to mention is just how do you actually go about um, pausing and adding new ASINs and when is the right time? Now, what I recommend doing is keeping a very, very close eye on the spend orders, sales, and your return on advertising spend. This is your most important metric um, within this targeting area right here. The return on ad spend is the ratio between how many sales were generated in, in terms of revenue, all divided by the amount of advertising that you spent. 
So you want this ratio to be you know, one, two, three, four times um, ideally. If you see this below one, that means that you're spending more advertising money than the sales that are being generated. So I'll come in here each day, I'll see how my uh, advertising campaign performed overnight, and I'll check out to see which of these ASINs are performing very well, you know, with a multiplier of one, two, three return on ad spend. And the ones that are not performing well, maybe let's just say that this second one here had a return on ad spend of about 0.2. That is a very ineffective uh, ASIN. So I'll go over here and I deactivate that. Now I may go ahead and I might find another competitor's ASIN to add in here. And you can do that by selecting add product targets. Or I might just let this run with the three ASINs that I have because they are performing very efficiently. So thanks for watching today, guys. I hope this gives you an idea of how you actually efficiently advertise. And this is one of my favorite strategies. This has worked for me, for my own business, and for other Patreons that I have in my mentorship program.